Hi, Gary Chilliwath here for Air Gunner Magazine, Shooting and Country TV. Welcome to Life at the Range. Well, we've got an interesting video this week, which I think is going to be very apt as we're coming into the winter season, shooting in the wet. Now, obviously, in the past, we've looked at clothing and things like that and, and keep yourself dry. And, you know, that's all really important. But will rain affect the way a pellet flies? Will getting a pellet wet affect the way it hits the target? We're going to look at these on the range today, but also we're going to show you some footage from Red Ferns, um, the final round of the UK HFT, and it chucked it down. Oh my, I've never shot in rain so heavy. Um, we also seriously abuse uh, Bill Birch from Throckmorton, which is always fun. We love you, Bill. And thank you for being such a good sport for all the rubbish that we threw at you. And um, we're shooting with Graham Cargan as well, and that's always an absolute pleasure. So we've got some time on the range. We're going to shoot some targets in the rain. Well, we've set up a hose pipe to simulate rain. Um, and we're going to show you some footage from Red Ferns. So welcome to Life at the Range. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, enjoy. Okay, so here we have our test rig. We have a hose that is spraying. There's our target. And as you can see, the water is coming over. And just to give you a rough idea, this is not very nice. Oh. Okay, so we've got our test rig up. Let's see, uh, let's see whether or not we can catch a water pellet. Should be fun. So the big question is, will a raindrop actually affect the way a pellet flies? Um, I've spoken to a couple of people who I respect. Um, Richard Woods, um, he said to me that once in a, a shoot off, he actually saw a, a puff of water in the distance as he fired and the pellet never even made the, uh, the target. So obviously it hit a pellet, uh, sorry, it hit a water drop en route and that deflected the target or deflected the pellet. But what are the odds on actually hitting a, a raindrop on the way down? Now, I spoke to Jason Lockett, who's one of the country's top uh, bench rest shooters. And because they, you know, they measure in millimeters. And he told me about a shoot where a, a gentleman by the name of Jerry May shot two perfect 250 cards in wind and dry conditions it then started to rain and his score dropped to 231. in his testing he believes that the rain can affect the pellet by one to five millimeters now is that pressure air density moisture you know in the air we don't know so we're going to fire three shots down at the top line with our hft 500 we're not going to use the springer we're going to give it the best chance we can not with that bent pellet. And then we're going to turn our artificial rain on and see how we go. Okay, top line. Okay, that's fractionally low. It is quite windy today. We've got about a constant 15 to 20 mile an hour wind. We're shooting at 25 yards. And there we go, pretty much all touching the marks. So now let's go and turn on our rain. Okay, so our rain is going. And let's see if it makes a difference.
Low. Low again. So there's three that have gone low. Let's go turn our rain off and let's shoot the bottom line and see what happens then. And we're back. Now, one or two things is gonna happen. These are all now gonna go low and I'm gonna to have to throw this piece of footage away because it's obviously of changing conditions or something like that. Or these are all gonna hit where the top line were. And we've learned something that I thought we wouldn't learn. Because I'll be honest with you, I didn't think the rain was really gonna make any difference at all. Well, right, but I'll be honest with you, I did, I did snatch at that trigger a bit. Right, stop trying to rush, Gary, concentrate. Just wait for that wind to dip. Absolutely on the button. And slightly left. Do that one again. Well, we do have a bit of a twitchy wind, but looking through the scope, the top three with no, you know, that we were just testing, all pretty much on the button. Then with the rain on, they're uniformly all, I would say about five millimeters low. Then on the bottom, okay, we've gone slightly right on that one, but I snatched. Then the middle one was bang on. And then the far right hand side, again, was fractionally under, but a little bit left. But what's interesting to me is those ones that are uniformly low. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and switch the water back on and we're gonna shoot that bottom, that sorry, that middle line again. Okay, so rain's back on, and let's go firing that one off. Middle line through the rain. Low. Low. And low. Well, I'd say that's fairly definitive. The fact that every time we shot through rain, we've dropped about five, six millimeters low. 
which is what Jason Lockett seemed to believe. Now the other thing that I've been asked to, uh, that a lot of us do, is what happens when the pellet gets wet. So we're going to put a mark down there and we've got three pellets, one, two, three, that one didn't go in, and they're wet like they're in a wet pellet pouch. So let's put a mark down. There we go. And let's see. Oh, I have turned the water off. What happens if we shoot a wet pellet? So it's come out of a sodden pellet pouch. Well, we went through the same hole. See, I expected this almost to be slightly lubricated. So I was expecting the pellet to go faster, maybe climb a bit. Oh, drop a bit low. Careful not to get any water in the channel. Oh, we'll get rid of that one because I just crushed it with the, uh, with the probe. Well, it would appear that a wet pellet doesn't make a huge amount of difference. One thing it will do though, is I have a tendency to put my pellet in my mouth. I recently had a blood test. I'm a train driver and we do these random blood tests. And the doctor said to me, are you an angler? And I went, no. He says, ah, I thought you would be. Because you put lead, you know, you've, your lead level is like three times what it should be. I said, I'm an air gun shooter. I put the lead in, I put the pellets in my mouth. He goes, ah, right, okay, don't. So it's not a toxic level, so I've been doing it for 10 or 15 years. But he said, you don't want lead in your system at all. It can drive you crazy. Um, I mean, literally. So try not to put lead pellets in your mouth. Because if you do, you could end up absolutely bonkers. Um, it's not good for you. That's why they banned lead paint. Um, if you want to see someone who spent a lot of their life licking lead paint, go and speak to Rex Bennett and you'll know why you shouldn't do it. So there we are. Um, I believed one thing. The bench rest shooters told me, no, it will make the pellet drop. And I think we've just pretty much proved it. I know, I know it's windy today and we could have done this indoors, but I've been waiting to do this particular test and I just haven't been able to get the conditions to do it. So we, Video's got to come out in a couple of days, so we just had to do our best. But, yeah, I didn't expect that. One of the biggest problems you'll get is at the end of a shoot, where it's been, you know, absolutely tipping it down with rain, you've taken your gun, you've got yourself a nice microfiber cloth, and you've given it a dry, and your gun is all lovely now and dry. Well, what do you do with it? With your bag, you've been opening it and closing it all the way around the chute. And the bag inside, even if you've zipped it, you know, try to zip it up all the time, your bag's going to be soaking wet. So you're going to be putting your nice dry gun back into a wet bag. Now, in the past, my recommendation has always been get yourself a gun slip, put the rifle into a gun slip and then put the gun slip in the bag nice idea well, a friend of mine said that's a bit of overkill gary just get yourself a towel which you can obviously use for anything you know if you get really wet you just get yourself a skanky old towel pick one up from a uh, a charity shop you can just wrap your gun up in it 
drop that into the bag and now you've got a nice dry gun in a nice dry towel and even if you're traveling for two or three hours there is no way that the moisture from the bag is going to get through the towel onto your gun because towels are designed to absorb water it's a much simpler idea than my idea of buying a gun slip so always happy to learn and when you get your gun home there's something I'd really recommend you buy. It's called Napier VP90. Now, I'll put a, a picture up here. It's, it's literally just a little sachet about that big. Now, it's not a desiccant. It's something different. It basically creates a vapor in your gun cabinet or wherever you store your rifle. And that's like an anti-corrosion vapor. And over time, it, you know... It, it basically permeates your stock and it permeates the metal or sits on top of the metal and it prevents corrosion. Um, they're about eight pounds of sachet and they last from everywhere, anywhere from six months to 12 months. So I just replace mine every nine months. Um, I actually threw my one out the other day, which is really annoying because um, I haven't ordered a new one. Um, but I'll put a picture up of, of one that I've actually just ordered off of eBay. I think it was eight quid. So it works out about 75p a month. But they are really, really good at stopping any kind of rust on your guns, especially if, you, if you're not going in and out your cabinet all the time. And, you know, you're a, some people store their guns in cabinets in garages which aren't heated. So Napier VP90 sachets are something that's well worth looking at and well worth using. Hi, this is Gary Chillingworth reporting for Shooting at Country TV at Redfern's. In the pouring rain, annoyed, peed off, wife, child, huge mortgage, got to go to work tonight. Why do we do this? Reporting from Redfern's, we're having a lovely time. See you all again very, very soon. Morning, everyone. Well, here we are at the lovely Redfern's. Um, don't know if you can see it on camera, but it is absolutely tipping it down with rain. I've got my uh, waterproof, I don't really know if you can show it like that, ones that come up onto the old chest. And if you remember the old Hale and Pace back in the Billy and Johnny, I think we've got a song about HFT. Well, as I say, the weather today is not fantastically brilliant, um, but we're going to go and have a bit of fun and we're going to see how we all get on. See people up with their brollies, but like I say, it is absolutely tipping it down. So we'll see you on the course and uh, hopefully we'll have a good day. Certainly better than yesterday. So uh, see you in a bit. Okay, so here we are on the course. It's still raining quite hard, but uh, you see plenty of people out here. One of the main issues you have during rain is obviously because the sun is not out the whole woods look dark and dingy so that's one of the things that's good about having some quality optics it makes it easier to actually uh, to see what you're doing but here we have we're, we're shooting with graham and bill two of the nicest people in hft graham's with his tutu style and we have Unlucky Graham. One of the good things about shooting in the rain is when you're looking through your scope you can often see which way the rain is coming down and that will actually give you a good idea on wind. So it can be an advantage, it's just sometimes a little bit miserable. Okay, well, the rain is coming down harder now. Uh, we can see us in the distance. We have a target, looks like a, a school bus. A cargy bus, as Graham just said. Bill's gonna shoot. But as you can see, we're only about five shots in. The mat is already soaking wet. Gun bags are soaking wet. Big drip behind the camera. <laughs> Big drip behind the camera. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> 
unlucky Bill. Now this is one of the worst things you get in HFT when you're the third person to shoot and you're shooting the top of the range PCP and the two fat blokes in front of you, one with a 2-2 and one with a Springer, have both killed it. And you just lay there and say to yourself, is there any point in me living or shooting? The humiliation. <laughs> this is Bill. <laughs> He's an HFT shooter. He's crying, but you can't see the tears because of the rain. One of the biggest problems with shooting in the rain is getting water on your lens. So that's why you always keep cloth in a bag, and that way you can uh, you can keep your lenses clean. So we've I've got some water on the end of my lens, and so uh, we're just going to see if we can dry it off. Right. Let's give it a little wipe around. Um, one of the advantages of having a sunshade is you can often keep the rain off your objectives. The ocular, you've got to try and keep it on, but but don't use a uh, you know don't use a really rubbish piece of tissue paper like that because you can end up scratching the lenses. Now sometimes we have a target. I say this is very very dark in here. So after the person shot it, we leave it down so that when we pull the target back up slowly. The shooter can actually see the target and the hole. See where it is, Bill? Yeah, I got it. Okay. And it makes it easier for them to see. Good shot, Bill. Yeah. See, Bill will now leave this target down so that when Graham goes to shoot it, he can pull it up slowly and be able to see where the kill is. But as you can see, it's now getting very misty out there, not just the rain. And one of the things we're struggling with today is that when you're in this kind of weather, actually I'm just going to see if I can just clean the lens and get better focus. Um, when you've got this kind of weather, um, it really affects you with your blur. If you know that your scope starts to blur at 40 yards, when you're actually aiming at a target and it's really dark, you can think it's further away than it is because your blur is wrong. That's why you should never rely on the blur. The other thing that Bill over here is struggling with is Bill set his gun up to shoot without the IR on. He switched the IR on and that slightly changed his impact points on where he shoots. So one of the really important things to do is if you're going to shoot with your IR on, always shoot with your IR on. Well, the rain's really coming down now. It's super hard. I'm going to pass the card over to Bill. Okay, poor old Graham here shooting 2-2, two -two, shooting it really well. But it's not easy in conditions like this. It's hard enough with a 177 style, let alone a 2-2. Two -two. Oh, good shot, Graham. Graham, how are you finding the blur effect in your scope in this kind of weather? It's terrible. You've got to really concentrate on, on your on your reticle. You've got to concentrate on your kill. There's so much to take in. I'm, I've got to move, Gary. I'm getting a little bit damp here, lads. Not a problem, mate. One of the biggest problems is you just want to get down and shoot, but you're going to end up messing up. So, just follow your same routine. Anyway, the weather was nice today, wasn't it? So, <laughs> oh, sorry, Gary. <laughs> Keep your gun bag closed because the last thing you want to do is get moisture in your gun bag because then your gun just gets soaking wet. Up to your target. Do all your proper range finding. <laughs> and one of the biggest problems is with a Springer, you've got this huge, great big hawk take water in. Well, that's one of the good things about having a sunshade. You can actually keep water out your pulp and you never want to get water in your pulp. Okay, this is fun. We've got to come up the peg. We've got our range card. 
which is soaking wet, so I could have laminated that. Up the head. And let's see, there we go. Shot, Gary. And there we go, solid kill, 25 mil, 40 ish yards, in the rain, up the peg. Well done. Okay, we're currently under a ceasefire and Bill has been very sensible and he's hiding underneath the brolly. Here is our Chief Marshal. He's Northern. Do you want to say something for the camera? <laughs> yeah, welcome to Red Bulls, Gary. Everyone having a good time? Yeah, well, you know, a bit wet, but we're getting on with it, aren't we? Because technically we're in Lancashire, right? Yeah, all right, got it. Because that's, yeah, that's, that's very insulting. Because Lancashire is the superior of the two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, if you look back on history, you'll find that's incorrect, won't you? <laughs> so here we are, obviously Mr. Cargan. No. Nope. You can see the rain is continuing to come down. Beautiful. Okay, here we have our cards. We're roughly halfway through. Uh, see, I had a really bad start on peg 18. Dink, dink, dink. The reason we had a really bad start was because I had my jacket up and when the jacket is up, or my collar up, that was stuck in between my cheek and the stock of the gun, which pushed my head fractionally to the left, so I was going out to the right on everything. Suddenly realised, dropped that down, and as you can see, I've only missed one target since then, which was the freestander. And, uh, always oh, I'll in the background, oh, it's Nick again. And all I did was miss a free sander. So the vortex is working brilliantly in this weather. I'm able to see all the targets and everything is really, really happy. So we've got another about 13 targets left to go and, uh, and we'll see how we get on. But we probably won't do much more filming now and we'll see you at the end of the shoot. OK, so here we have the kneel or stand. Mr. Cargan killed it with a 2-2. Mr. Chillingworth killed it with a springer. And now Mr. William Birch takes it on with the mighty ISP. It's a, it's a TM1000. Sorry, TM1000. <laughs> We're all going to sit here in bated breath. We have a target the size of a dinner plate. Almost impossible to miss, as we have both shown. We believe in Bill, one of the top shooters at Throckmorton. <laughs> you can cut the tension with a knife. Ooh. 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 Oh. <laughs> so, Billy, William, you've let us down, you've let yourself down, you've let the team down. What do you have to say for yourself? Okay, well, we've finished up. We finished up with a 49. Um, really happy. The scope worked well. It was so dark out there today, um, but I was able to see the kill on every single target. Um, should have got a 51. Had a really nice target, 35 yards, uh, 35 mil, 35 yards. Slipped down the peg because glove was wet. That was my own fault. Stupid donut, but there you go. Um, so that's our wet weather shoot today. We've come off. We've changed. You always bring a change of clothes. I was able to uh, warm up. I've got myself a cup of tea. I've had a very nice sausage sandwich. And now we've got a four hour drive back to sunny Essex. So I hope you've enjoyed the video today. Um, we'll, uh, we'll add a couple of photographs in. One of the best is halfway round. Um, I've got my, my nice new aim points for my lovely Vortex Viper on cardboard. Got wet, halfway round, I lost all my aim points. I should have laminated it, but that's an absolutely idiotic thing to do but I was able to remember them so it didn't affect me at all but thank you so much for joining us you know in, take care of each other and thank you from life at a range ta-da <laughs>